Okay, so for this next section, we're focusing still on the basics of statistics and biostatistics, and we're going to have to emphasize a little education as it relates to some basic terminology that will be used for the remainder of your career if you're not familiar with these terms. So we're comparing quantitative versus qualitative uh, data as it relates to data entry and data analysis. And we're also um, going to just cover the basics of what makes something a dependent variable versus an independent variable for a, a simple statistics perspective. On here we've got some pictures of percent body fat. Um, we're going to use an example or two here in a minute um, where the way that that picture is designed, it will help us um, cover quantitative versus qualitative. Um, if you're wanting to read a little bit about this, um, Larry Winter's book, it's an online PDF um, that he's got out there, and uh, I think pages 8 through 10 and 11 will be helpful. So quantitative versus qualitative variables. We have quantitative variables. These are variables where information or data are collected in a numerical way. And then we have qualitative data in which information or data are collected in a way in which they fit into categories or are placed into categories, thereby making them categorical when they're in that, that capacity. So hard to uh, understand right now if you don't already understand or have pre prior knowledge on this. So we'll, we'll cover some examples here and um, be a little more specific in the next few minutes. So quantitative data, as we said, it's numerical, meaning there's numbers. And these numbers can be continuous or they can be um, dis discrete. Often when we think of discrete, you, many people think of like whole numbers. So continuous values or continuous data, they're data where the values of whatever you're trying to measure can be essentially anything or anywhere. Um, and it can cover everything from whole numbers to decimals. Those are all possible to see. So some examples, numbers like 0 0.2, 20.1, 1.54, 123.51, 5 5.0. Where might these types of data come from? Well, it could be something like, uh, what's the increase in the baby's body temperature? Um, so body temperature would be the, uh, the variable, or increase in body temperature could be a variable. Um, it might be the um, you know amount of weight that somebody weighs on a scale in pounds or kilograms, or it could be the amount of weight a person lost in a given week. So you can see that these are continuous data. There are infinitely number, infinitely long numbers of possibilities, especially if you have instruments that can measure to the nearest, you know, ten thousandth or hundred thousandth. So there's a tremendous number of possibilities with continuous data. Continuous data, if the instruments collecting the data are accurate and precise, they are probably the best level or best type of data you can get in terms of being able to do analysis. It's a lot closer to the truth than, than putting things in categories. But some things just flat out cannot be um, measured in a, on a continuous scale. Some things are measured generally in like whole numbers. So we'll cover what a discrete value is right now. So discrete values, these are the values of whatever is being observed or measured, and it can only take on certain outcomes, often reported as whole numbers for things like the number of events. So when you think of things like the number of, usually you're talking about discrete variables. Examples might be 4, 2, 17, 88. Maybe you lost three people. So um, how many people entered the amusement park on a particular day. How many study participants were enrolled in the study? Um, how many people entered the Bureau of Motor Vehicles office between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock? How many pets um, were given a rabies shot during the, um, you know, some rabies education week? 
how many ticks were pulled off of each child after their week long, you know, vacation to uh, you know, the forest. Those are all discrete whole numbers. Bacteriologically, when people grow um, bacteria on petri dishes, they count the colonies. How many colonies were observed? You know, there were 23 um, magenta colored colonies that were called E. coli on the petri dish. So these are all um, examples there of discrete data. So discrete data. So they're quantitative, but the numbers can only take on certain outcomes. They're not taken on often like um, finite, like very small decimal outcomes. Our example with regards to percent body fat. So maybe we measure percent body fat in four people, and the measures are 6.8, 15.8, 22.0, and 31.6 percent. They can measure percent body fat by um, kind of weighing people or there's a way of water displacement. They put them in a water bath and how much water is displaced. There's also ways where they take this little thing called a caliper and they measure um, certain parts of the body and then estimate percent body fat. But you've got these numbers here, 6.8 percent, 15.8 percent, 22 percent, 31.6 percent. So do these appear to be discrete data or continuous data? They're all quantitative data, but are they discrete or continuous? So you should make up your mind, and the easy answer is continuous. So they can take on an infinite number of possible uh, you know, data um, entry points on that, especially if you got a really accurate caliper or a good measuring system. All right, in 2015 to 2018, there were these uh, color runs at a university that had 245, 315, 374, and 340 participants. So are these data continuous or discrete? They're definitely quantitative, and they may be analyzed um, sometimes as continuous, but the best answer would be that those are discrete data. They're that you can only have like a whole person. All right, so next we're going to get into the qualitative data. And qualitative data, at least for the purposes of here in statistics, is uh, categorical data um, in other uh, courses and in research methods in general. There's qualitative research methods that often involve collection of narratives and keywords, and there's an entire um, I guess, kind of discipline of qualitative research methodology and even quali qualitative data analysis that goes beyond this. But for in this uh, course and in, in biostatistics, we often think of qualitative data as being data in which we can uh, categorize. And these data, when we categorize them, we then put them into a nominal or ordinal category. And these nominal and ordinal categories can then be used using the statistical software to help us um, use the uh, statistical methodologies that we're going to cover for biostatistics and be able to, you know, make inferences about populations and health and do all the kinds of things that we do with biostatistics. So nominal data that comes from the word name, it's from the root word nom, like, you know, nombre, name. So the data are essentially names and they fit into named categories. Um, and although the other variable type that we may talk about, ordinal variables, they may collect data that also have names, but ordinal data have an inherent order. Nominal data, they're categorical, they're categories, but they don't fit necessarily into any particular order. So um, we don't order females and males. We don't order things like uh, people by eye color, like blue eyes versus green eyes versus brown eyes. Or when we collect data um, by maybe, uh, you know, ethnicity, race, nationality, you know, heritage or something like that, you wouldn't have Irish, German, 
um, French, you know, East African, um, Indian. You wouldn't have those kind of in a particular order, like we'll see here in a second. There are some things that clearly fit ordin ordinal definitions very well. We also probably wouldn't have like regions of the country or states ordered in a way um, that might make sense um, kind of statistically. So Midwest, Southeast, Pacific, which one's first? I mean, alphabetical order is not what we're talking about here for an order. We're talking about an order in which there is like an obvious pattern or directionality. So qualitative data um, include these categories, right? We just covered nominal. Now we're going to talk about ordinal. So ordinal data, they are organized and there's a, a pattern or directionality in which these types of data uh, tend to go. So things can be scored as low, medium, high, or um, maybe you have age data that are categorized from like infant to child to teenager to adult to elderly or retiree. So we've already done this example. All right, now next this example. So BMI data, they're entered in for persons who are underweight, healthy range, overweight, and obese. So are these data continuous, discrete, nominal, or ordinal? So definitely not continuous because we don't have any numbers here. Um, not discrete because we don't have like uh, whole numbers for like how many people are in each. So people are entered, the data are entered in. So th these are kind of named. They have names, but there's obviously an order to these. So ordinal would be the best answer because you there's a there's a definite order from underweight to healthy to overweight to obese there's a pattern there so these are definitely ordinal next uh, dental patients are asked how much does your tooth hurt patients respond on a scale of one to ten and then are placed in the categories of no pain to worst possible pain so they ask how much does your tooth hurt and they say eight so then they're categorized as very severe. So when they're categorized as very severe, are these data nominal or ordinal? So these definitely have names, but there's also definitely an order there. So if there's an order there, then we're gonna call it ordinal. And generally, scales like the pain scale that's used here, um, it's not considered to be discrete or continuous, even though they might have numbers but people may analyze it as such. But generally we view the pain scale as being an ordinal tool. All right, so a study's done that codes participants as male and female. Are these data no nominal or ordinal? So we definitely don't wanna rank females or males first or last. So we would definitely just call those names or nominal data. A study looking at religious affiliation in Appalachia codes study participants by religious denomination like Catholic, Southern Baptist, Other Baptist, Holiness, Methodist, Agnostic, and more. And somebody might be able to try to create some sort of pattern or order based off of when these started, but um, for the most part that probably wouldn't happen. We wouldn't uh, be coding it in a particular way with an order if we're examining the health as it relates to these. So we would treat these all as just nominal data, just names. There's no necessary order there. And um, the next uh, video here, we're gonna get into dependent versus independent variables. So we're all out of time on um, you know this first section. So we're gonna get into de dependent and independent variables in our next video. Thank you.